everyone, it's Jordan Yates here. I'm a sales engineer with Innovative IDM. And what I have for you all today is the SMC EX600 wireless demo. Before getting too into the weeds of the demo of its components and how it works, what I wanna do is hit it at a high level overview of taking a look at the board that is attached to the demo. I really like this because it helped me learn how to use the demo before I started talking about it with my customers. So first and foremost, we have a PLC in a system. This could be any kind of PLC. This could be Omron, um, Allen Bradley, anything essentially that is using the field bus of Ethernet IP or ProBNet. So these are very common communications. What we do next is we take the communications and the program we have in our PLC. It will then be set up with our initial settings for a monitor tool and monitor pairing through our NFC card reader, which I have here. You could do this on your PC, your laptop, as long as you have the NFC card reader programming software, which is free and downloadable on SMC's website. Next, after we initialize our NFC card reader with our PC, we will then take it and bring it to our base unit. The base unit has a number of IO points up to 1,280 inputs and outputs. Theoretically, the base could control up to 1,280 inputs and 1,280 outputs through the remotes. This is if multiple remotes are used per base. Theoretically, up to 127 remotes can be controlled by one base, but we suggest not exceeding 15 remotes per base to avoid bandwidth issues. Now, what you do is you take this NFC card reader as it's plugged into your PC and you have your software pulled up, all you do is you touch it to your base unit, set itself up and initialize and know what it's looking at and recognize the base unit. To clarify my last statement, to initialize the base or remote, the first step is placing the NFC card reader on the unit, then manually initializing it in the SMC software. There's a few extra steps that are not shown here. Um, next, what you do is you want to initialize to your remote unit over here. But what you want to keep in mind when you're setting up this unit is that the base and remote need to be within a 10 meter radius of each other and there needs to be nothing blocking or interfering. So don't try to do it through a steel wall or beam or something like that. We need a clear line of sight from the wireless base unit to the wireless remote unit for the best communication. So next, what we're going to do is we would take our NFC card reader that is still plugged into our PC, we bring it over here, you touch it, and you initialize it to your remote. The remote now knows that it is connected to the base and will be controlled. Another note I'd like to add is that the purpose of the NFC card reader is used to set up parameters such as the IP address on the base, the IO sizing on the base and remote units, and pairs the base to the remote. The NFC card reader also allows communication from the PC to the base and remote unit. This is going to show us that the remote has the option for solenoid valves, an IO unit with solenoid valves, um, or just an IO unit. So here we have the IO unit and solenoid valves because you could do just one um, or both. It's up to you. The only thing you need to realize is the most important part is this wireless remote unit. This is the whole EX600. This is what is being communicated. Now, these parts are interchangeable, as I was saying. For this demo's purpose, they have got a SMC analog input output. They also have a digital input and then the solenoid bank for pneumatic purposes. Not every situation will have pneumatics. Not every situation wants just the um, electric communication it really just depends on the customer's needs and i love that it's customizable based on that um, this demo board will also say it has the other products such as the pressure switch flow switch auto switch and other switches that we'll see down here is the the analog input and the display which will then talk over here to the electric pneumatic regulator <clears throat> As well as that, you can have various different actuators controlled by your unit. And here for the demo purpose, we have the pneumatic actuator, which I'm going to move with my hand though. You'll see, we move this here. We have the Hall effect sensors. This lights up green. I push it in. 
Um, as we see, it's in the third position here on our input only. Push it over here and it moves and the Hall Effect sensor realizes it's in another position It shows up on the input there. Like I said, these different parts that are on the board other than the wireless remote unit is going to be interchangeable. As well as that, it also wants to show you you can have various actuators such as this actuator here. And this just goes into more detail of the pressure switch, flow switch, and auto switch, and other switches that are seen within this demo down here. I think this is a good way to showcase uh, various staples of SMC products that you like. So the next thing I want to bring to your attention on this wireless demo board is going to be a concern that a lot of people have with it being wireless. And they're like, okay, I have a loud, loud shop. Like, isn't this going to be affected by the noise? You would think, but the exciting part is that this is noise resistant and it has a 2.4 gigahertz ISM frequency band hopping frequency of five milliseconds. Now let me explain to you what that means in simple terms. So typically, if we have wireless devices such as an RFID, they're operating between 100 kilohertz and about 5 gigahertz. Your Bluetooth is up here in about the 5 gigahertz range, and your sight noise is typically from 10 kilohertz to a little less than a gigahertz. Um, other motor drivers and electric heaters, they stay below about 10 megahertz, okay? Now, what my wireless system is operating at is up here around the 2.4 gigahertz section. So what this means is that my frequency is way above what most other frequencies are. Okay, but I see that other things are intersecting here. How is that going to affect it? Well, that's where the frequency hopping comes in. So every five milliseconds, which can't even blink that fast, my wireless system will jump to another frequency. So it's constantly jumping around in order to not interfere or be interfered with by another frequency that is near its level. This keeps the communication clear and will keep your system running without any interference. I think this is extremely smart that they put that in there. And I find it to be very exciting because I mean, as long as there is, as I said, the clear line of sight of the 10 meters, your frequency should be just fine. Another concern, which is not on this board, but I want to bring up is a lot of times people hear wireless and they think, oh no, hacking. Um, someone's going to mess with my system. The thing that seemed like a downfall before of only having a 10 meter radius to communicate with your wireless base unit to your remote is actually a huge benefit when it comes to worrying about any sort of hacker or outside interference. You would literally need to be right next to this machine to interfere with it. And even at that point, I mean, someone could be cutting wires and doing that up close. So the security is much less of an issue because this doesn't have the bandwidth to reach past and go through solid walls. So I would say we don't need to be too worried about that. The next thing I want to draw your attention to on the board is the high speed connection from power supply on to start a communication. It's a minimum of 250 milliseconds for one remote. Okay. Let me tell you why this uptime is so exciting and very, very useful and a ginormous benefit. So essentially what it's saying is that if I turn this remote unit on in 250 milliseconds, it's going to initialize with my base and tell me what I'm supposed to do. The applications for the wireless remote units are very broad, but the two main ones that I see it in is going to be a situation such as a welding environment with a welding robot, putting this on end of arm tooling or a end of arm tooling um, for tool changers. So an automatic tool changer would largely benefit from this uptime because with this remote unit on it, when the tool is changed, as soon as it connects and powers up, it's going to realize what this tool is supposed to do based on this remote communication unit. So this is very exciting because we could have this entire unit here with the pneumatics, the um, electric signals of the inputs, outputs, and have the analog, the digital, Maybe you need an entire unit. Maybe you need it expanded and you need a whole lot of more solenoids, okay? Or, look at this. Here I have a remote digital input. Do you see the size difference of this compared to this? 
Now, if the end of arm tooling is already kind of heavy, you need to slim it down a bit and all you are sending are electric signals and we don't need any of our um, pneumatics here, what we can do is replace this big old chunk with one of these little guys. Here's another remote digital input. Um, guys, these are so small. This weighs hardly anything at all, okay? Here's another PNP digital output that we could have on there. So you could have input and output, and then another PNP digital input. Okay, a lot of these wires are... Um... To clarify, the cables from the compact remote unit are not connected back to the standard remote and are simply connections for the digital input and not communication cables. And furthermore, right up to our wireless remote unit. This reduces the size, the footprint, and most of all the weight, because a lot of times we're trying to max out the weight of our end of arm tooling, and this really helps reduce it. That's very exciting. So recap the benefit of using this for automatic tool changers on the end of arm tooling or like rotary table is the fact that this will connect up, initialize very quickly. You won't even be able to blink faster than this initializes and then it'll be ready to go. And there's not going to be the issue of all the cabling, reconnecting, wiring it up and having to check it, make sure it works and then troubleshooting if it doesn't. Now I mentioned the other large application that this has been used for, tested and really highly recommended for would be welding robots. So putting this of the end of arm tooling of a welding robot is very useful because welding robots tend to be very loud. They're moving around a lot and it flexes the cabling and creates a very difficult environment to have to troubleshoot, do your downtime and trace back where the, which wires were affected and the communications were affected by the noise or the flexing or sorry, the flexing back and forth of all of your movement because you're you're welding over here you're welding over there well this unit is used and as it shows you over here noise is not a concern we're operating at the higher gigahertz and frequency hopping every five milliseconds so it is more than capable of handling a loud welding environment and being able to be used um, just as any other wired up end of arm tooling would be Again, if you are going and you want to change your manifold and you want to move your, your robot somewhere else, all you'd have to do is you get your wireless base unit in that area, 10 meters within, and you initialize it to your wireless remote unit. Oops, very simple. So this is super great and has so many benefits and has been working really well for a lot of different customers. Um, if you guys would like to hear more about success stories, reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to tell you. I'd like to wrap up this video with a high level overview of a summary of what we've looked at and what it is that you need to have a wireless EX600 running. Essentially, you got your base unit, you have your wireless remote unit, and all you need is to decide from there based on your programming of your PLC, what software you want to use to connect up with Ethernet IP or Profinet communication to your PC, which will then have your NFC card reader to initialize both your wireless base unit and your wireless remote unit. From there, based on your application, pick your digital or analog inputs, outputs, whether or not you're going to be using pneumatics and will need a solenoid bank, and then anything that it will be controlling from there. I know this could seem complicated at first, but if you guys have any questions, not only do we distribute stock and rep SMC as one of our vendors, we also can integrate troubleshoot support and help you guys with any projects you have here at Innovative IDM. We're based out of Louisville, Texas, but we also have stocking locations and engineers, sales teams, and customer service representatives down in Houston, Texas, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Chicago, Illinois. To reach out to us, you can email us at info at IIDM.com or give us a call. I'll put the um, number here on the screen at the end, and we would love to help you guys out with any applications you have. So thank you all so much for watching. We look forward to helping you, and I hope you all have a great day.